Hi, Daisy and I will be discussing to you how to set up SIMV, which is a mode of ventilation, and I will be giving you a little background information on positive pressure ventilation. Some indications for positive pressure ventilation are as follows. Pneumonia, acute lung injury, acute respiratory distress, also known as ARDS, acute pulmonary edema, severe sepsis, shock, severe exacerbation of asthma and COPD, neuromuscular disorders such as Guillain barre myasthenia gravis, or drug overdose, cardiopulmonary arrest, respiratory failure, trauma, cardiovascular impairments such as stroke, tumor, and emboli, and lastly, pulmonary impairments such as COPD, pneumothorax, infection, and pneumonia. What is SIMV? SIMV stands for Synchronized Intermittent Mandatory Ventilation. The, object the objective of SIMV is to provide an adequate minute ventilation while allowing spontaneous breaths to be performed by the patient. Some advantages of SIMV over other modes of ventilation are that it helps in the prevention of respiratory muscle fatigue, it helps to prevent value trauma, which could also lead to barrel trauma, it facilitates weaning, it has less hemodynamic side effects, and it's more comfortable for the patient. When setting SIMV, a prescribed number of mandatory breaths per minute are delivered, as well as a prescribed preset tidal volume, and the two together will give you your minute ventilation. Also, a prescribed fraction of inspired oxygen, also known as the FiO2, is set to adequately oxygenate the patient. Two, you can set PEEP, which is optional, but it's good to set it because it improves the patient's functional residual capacity, and it also helps with better distribution of oxygen, as well as recruiting the lungs. With the mandatory breaths in the volume control mode, they are triggered by time in patient, and when it's patient triggered, it's triggered by pressure or flow. Also, it's limited by pressure, volume, or flow and it's cycled by pressure, volume, or time. On the spontaneous breaths, the patients have the ability to take spontaneous breaths in between the mandatory breaths that are preset, which will compensate for the remaining minute ventilation. You can add pressure support as an option as well to the spontaneous breaths, and this is a good measure to take because it assists with the breaths and it guarantees a more acceptable tidal volume, which in turn will give you a more acceptable minute ventilation as well. Here is a graphic of SIMV. Here it shows where pressure is variable. Um, here are some of the mandatory breaths right here, and these are the spontaneous breaths where pressure support is added. We can see here where all the mandatory breath flow and volume are more constant. And these are also the spontaneous breaths where it's a little more variable, but pressure support is added to get an adequate tidal volume as well on those breaths. Some benefits of positive pressure ventilation is that it improves gas exchange and distribution which does that by improving the VQ mismatch and decreasing intrapulmonary shunting, which in turn will increase your oxygenation and ventilation. Also, it decreases the patient's work of breathing. Problems and complications that you can see with positive pressure ventilation, more so with this mode SIMV, um, is that it's possible for the patient and the ventilator to inspire in a series. Therefore, one breath would be on top of another breath, and this is known as stacking breaths. And this could lead to high airway pressures. Also, aspiration, tracheostenosis, infection, barrel trauma, decreased cardiac output, especially when you use PEEP, 
fluid retention, immobility, and inadequate nutrition. Now we will demonstrate to you how to indeed set up SIMV on the servo eye. So to start off by setting up SIMV on a mechanical ventilator, you want to make sure you do your pre-use check and your patient circuit test. Once that is done, we're going to then select a mode. Here are your list of modes and we want SIMV. And now we are going to set up our parameters. The first thing we want to do is set a tidal volume. Usually we want this from 4 to 8 milliliters per kilograms. We will set this at 550. Next you want a respiratory rate. Here we want a low respiratory rate because if you set a high respiratory rate, then the patient will not want to breathe spontaneously. We, that's what we need, a patient to do spontaneous breaths with their mandatory breaths. Next we have the PEEP. Usually we set this about three to five and this is to compensate the loss of the functional res residual capacity known as FRC. And here we will set our FiO2. Usually we set it up to 100% and then you start titrating down once you access the patient. Over here, these are already defaulted settings, but once you access the patient and see their graphs and flows, this is where then we can start changing the inspiratory time or the trigger. Having a decrease in the trigger will allow the patient to be more sensitive and more synchrony to the ventilator. And it's always good, just like we said before, to add pressure support to those spontaneous breaths. And here we will set it up at 10. And we will set our eye time to 0 0.9. That's usually a default setting. Like I said, later on you can reassess. At this time, it is important to set your alarm settings to make sure that you can get alarms when the patient is asynchrony or there may be a problem it's such as increased airway resistance or decreased compliance. And you just want to make sure that your patient is um, in sync with the ventilator. And that's pretty much how to set up SIMV. Thank, Thank you, you and have much. a nice day.